Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking about debugging on the GPU or debugging the GPU, uh, all of the data that's on our GPU specifically, not the assembly or the super low level circuitry. It's gonna be basic overview of metal debugging. Um, and what makes metal so awesome is the fact that they provide the most epic debugging tools. And so we're going to dive really headstrong into that. Uh, there's not going to be much code in this episode. It's basically just how you yourself personally can get better at figuring out what's wrong with my, why, why am I rendering this over this? You know, why is this getting rendered before this? Why is this in front of this? You know, there's a bunch of questions you can ask and it can all be solved with GPU debugging with metal. And it's really easy and simple once you kind of get the hang of it. And I'm here to get you ready for that. This is actually a requested episode, so boom. Uh, yeah, uh, follow me on Discord or follow me, come to the Discord chat, I guess. Uh, if you wanna chit chat about metal stuff, hit me up on uh, GitHub if you wanna go grab this code, uh, yada, yada, yada. Subscribe, like, do that stuff if you really want to. And yeah, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna get started right now in developer.apple.com. I'm going to use a sample project for this because this is a sophisticated project, all right? You're gonna see this and you're gonna have your mind blown if you haven't already seen it. It's really, really well done. It's a good example of how to use code in metal in general. So if you wanna figure out how to set command buffers and render pass descriptors and all that stuff, use this because this is gonna, if you walk through this step-by-step, step, you'll be able to find out all that cool stuff. Um, but what we're gonna use it for is debugging because we need a sophisticated project to kind of see how easy it is to see what's going on on the system level um, without actually even needing to look through the code. We can see what kind of state stuff is getting set and we can sort of do that in our Swift project. But I'm not gonna do that today. Today's about debugging. All I want you to do is go here. You don't have to, I recommend it. Go to here, I'll put this in the description. Um, download the deferred lighting and open it up. And once you've done that, you should come to this really beautiful application. Get it up and running on your computer. You might need to set the, uh, might need to go up here to this Xcode icon and set your team. And once you've set your team, oh, you're ready to go. Press play and you get this. Ready? Oh, look at that. That is, that is fantastical. I can stare at that all day. I'm not even kidding. You see how it has shadows? It has all these little point lights. Look at all the different additions of the lights that's so cool. They have uh, diffuse lighting, specular lighting. They have a skybox in the background. They have like this albedo. They have all sorts of butt mapping. Like this is epic, epic. And um, all of the code is there. You can look through all of this code. So we're not gonna do that. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna debug it. So let's go ahead and debug this and see what's going on under the hood. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this over. Down here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's a camera uh, that will take a snapshot of your GPU. So see it says capturing GPU replaying frame. This will bring up a snapshot of a GPU frame. Pretty cool how it does that. It captures everything that just happened. Uh, yeah, so on the left side, let's talk about what we see here, okay? The left side's gonna be our call stack. Leave it at that. The middle is going to be the data that we've set on our GPU and all of our buffers and our textures and our color attachments and all that jazz. That's what that's gonna be. And then on the right side, that could be whatever the hell you want it. It looks like right now, it's just all three of the color attachments that it has. And yeah, so we're gonna start with the middle. Um, so down here in draw fairies, it looks like, this is the current uh, group it's in. It has draw primitives so this is the drawing of the primitives for all the fairies. Now, all the fairies are the light sources and you'll see it circles them. The, the, this is smart enough to know where those are and it'll circle them for you so you can see where they stand out. If I were to go to draw directional light, let's see what that one looks like. Okay, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna go with this one. Um, draw primitives. So at the very top, you see it says vertex, fragment, and attachment. Let's start with the vertex. When we say uh, engine.device.createBuffer, we're literally creating these buffers. Buffer at zero, buffer at one, buffer at two, buffer at three, buffer at four. So these are the indexed buffers that exist on the GPU, okay? Here's the size of them, and here's the details of them. 
Um, if you go inside them, you can see that there's like actual data inside. So if you need to verify that your positions are correct in space, boom. Uh, looks like here's light data. So this one takes in a lot more light colors slash radius and light speed. Look at that. That's a lot more crazy than just a position. So you get to look through all that information. Um, and at the very bottom, you'll see it says the vertex function. This is for this render pipeline state. This is the vertex function we are using. We're using fairy vertex. If we go into that, look, we can see our actual vertex shader. Boom, boom, there it is. And I believe, I can't remember what it is, but if you edit this and um, instead like change this to a one, there's a way to like refresh this and make it show up on your uh, GPU. So this will re-render re the frame for you. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff here. Here's, uh, here's all the instances on the right hand side. And you can just, I mean, this is phenomenal, right? So play with this because I don't have enough time to go through all this. I just kind of want to show you around. Um, and then down here, we have the fragment shader. The fragment shader has a bunch of textures, right? Because basically the fragment's job is to take textures and it looks like it generated these before and it's passing them through and uh, its job is to apply color, right? So um, yeah, here's all the textures that are applied. Here's the buffers and here's the actual fragment function, which is fairly straightforward, nice and easy. Um, so cool, right? There's the fragment function. Let's go back. Uh, and then at the bottom, you'll see we have these attachments. Now these attachments are literally when we're saying render pipeline descriptor dot color attachment at index zero dot texture dot pixel format. These are what we're talking about. These are the actual textures we're setting on those. So this one's the depth. This one's the stencil. This one's the color. So the final output of this will be, you know, our actual color of the scene. So um, that's pretty sweet stuff too. So this, this middle part is going to be our data. And if you go through any one of these points in time, like for the draw fairies uh, at the very top, you know, here's set render pipe or well, I mean, here's everything right now. So when we go to set render pipeline state, here's everything that is currently on the GPU. None of this has been cleared from the GPU yet. So it still exists there. So if I was thinking I'm, I'm starting with a clean slate on my GPU, I'm not because I haven't actually cleared this stuff once my last render pipeline state was over. That's part of it. Um, so here's set depth stencil state, here's set vertex buffer, all that jazz, all the way down to draw primitives. Now let's talk about this left-hand side, okay? This left-hand side is really cool. Um, so basically it's reading your code and it's doing exactly what your code did. So it's the call stack. Uh, so when we say my command, this is the command buffer being generated. So here we create the, the command buffer and we label it my command. I'll show you how to do that. We set the label for my command. We had a completed handler. So once the command buffer is done, there's like some sort of thing that it does. We'll do that in a future episode. Don't need to worry about that now. Uh, here's the shadow map pass, the render command encoder one and command encoder two. So if I open up the shadow map pass, I click that, look at this. Actually, let's go to my command. It's even cooler. So if I zoom out, so I click my command and I zoom out, this right here is the entire command buffer generation. This is what's gonna happen through the entire life cycle of your command buffer. The first thing it does is it creates a shadow pass. Looks like it has this depth texture. And if I zoom in, this is pretty sweet. If I zoom in, you'll see it has depth 32 float. The dimensions are 2048, 2048, the allocation side and the clear store. So it's telling me all the information on my texture without me even needing to go and see what this project did. You know, what, uh, if I was thinking like, why is this so small? You know, come in here, just look at this. If I double click the data over here on the right side, this is all the data that's going through. Uh, I don't know what any of it means because this is gibberish. It says float one, uh, whatever. So this is going to be the shadow map pass. And the shadow map pass is a render command encoder. It's, it's, a, it's a render pass, but it's still generating a render command encoder. You see, if I scroll this out, shadow map pass is just render command encoder with descriptor generated. And it's just called shadow map pass. They set the label on the render command encoder to shadow map pass. Then they do this shadow map and they create this depth shadow map. Then they take that and it look, it filters down in. See the nice little, it shows you it goes down that filters through and it goes into the next render command encoder stages, which is like the G buffer pass. So it's going to generate all of this really, these really cool textures to sample from. Like here's albedo. Here's your normal map. Here's your, uh, what is this? Like depth buffer or something? It's like 
yeah, so here's the depth buffer and then the, the other one, the depth stencil, and this one's, you know, all sorts of stuff that I don't know. This is, this is sophisticated shit, but um, look at the, there's the time at the top, there's how many draw calls it takes to actually generate all of this information, which is three, which is really good. Um, but once you have all that generated, it's still on the GPU. Remember I said it stores on the GPU. You haven't cleared it, which means you can still grab from that location and do stuff with it with your next render command encoder, which is this one. And that's going to do th all of this stuff. And if I go back to my draw G, G buffer, you'll see it does there. Here's the three draws. So there's one draw call. There's two draw calls. There's three draw calls and that last draw G buffer, by the way. And, um, so let's go into the final render command encoder on the left hand side. It looks like draw directional light has, you know, it does all this stuff, does one draw primitives, and then it'll do another group of drawing the light mask, drawing point lights, drawing sky, drawing fairies. And so over here, this is basically the call stack of your entire application. Then they finally get to the end of this command encoder, press end encoding, clear out of that, present the drawable and commit the uh, command buffer. And then that's the entire draw. That was your that was your scene being drawn for that one frame and what was happening and all the debug information you could ever imagine on a sophisticated system. Like this is very complex stuff. So I'm gonna stop that, I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna go over to our freaking badass game engine and we're gonna do some stuff like that on ours. So if I press play and wait a second, we should see some pretty sweet cubes from our last instant game object episode if it ever happens, boom. Uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throttle this down a little bit because uh, yeah, that's a little bit much. I'm gonna drop, drop these down to 10, 10, 10, cause doing this frame capture with this uh, YouTube stuff and it's just, my computer's gonna blow up, it's gonna die. Okay, so throttling these back to 10, put them at 70, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now we should see you know, just less cubes being drawn, which is fine, less cubes. But if I wait for it to be kind of big and I hit my camera, so go down to the bottom, hit the camera, watch this, wait for it, boom. All right, so the first thing that jumps out to me when I hit my camera, so this looks very similar, right? It's exactly what we saw in the sophisticated system. But the first thing that jumps out to me right now is this little ditty right here. Um, it says that the drawable so inside of my renderer class, it looks like my CA metal layer next drawable is called way too early. Um, that's okay, it's just creating a little bit of CPU stalling. We don't have too complex of a system right now, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Also, I don't know how to fix it. If you know how to fix it, let me know. I'm gonna research it, but if you can help me out, that'd be perfect. Um, but yeah, so that's like a warning that the GPU debugger would tell you immediately, like, hey, it's calling this too early. You can make this better. Um, but let's go and look at, uh, well, now we have, we have our renderer class up. So I'm going to just drag this over. So we're going to hide all that stuff behind. And then we're going to look at the call stack and see our code in, you know, collab, right? Uh, so the first thing we do is we create a command buffer here up at the top, that command buffer. Look at that behind. Actually look at, we have our depth buffer and depth buffer and our texture that will be actually rendered to the screen. Right, so if I click this, it's the exact texture that will be rendered to the screen. This will be the depth buffer. And then it has all that information. One draw call, wow. Uh, so yeah, we set our command buffer, just like we do right here. Uh, the render, then inside of our command buffer, we create a command buffer dot make render command encoder. So there's our render command encoder. And then we took the scenes. So that's all this jazz from here to like here. Um, that's drawing of the scene. And then at the very bottom, we have end encoding. We present our drawable and we commit our drawable. Now, if you remember in the last one, they had them separated out into like groups, like, oh, let's draw fairies, draw sky, do all this cool stuff. Uh, that's what we, we want to do in ours. Ow, 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 as well. Um, so let's do that right now. So the first thing I'm noticing is that all we have is command buffer. What the hell is command buffer? That could be anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go here while it's running, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna go command buffer dot uh, label equals, and I'm just gonna call it my command buffer. 
And then also my render command encoder dot label equals uh, first render command encoder. Now when I replay this and I re-debug it, actually I could have just pressed the little refresh button. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, if I then capture right now, uh, you'll notice on the side that it says my command buffer and then my first render command encoder. So I'm giving these things labels so I know where the hell to find them. You know, one, you can search them with like control shift F. Two, uh, you know, you can name them whatever the hell you want so you can be funny about it. Uh, so yeah, we're setting the names of our render command encoder. Now let's go to where we're ticking our scene. That actually takes place inside of, um, a, I mean, we go through a couple things because it's our engine, but the primary place we want to be is our scene, right? Because our scene is ticking. So if you notice, we set our render command encoder right there. Then we set our vertex bytes. There we are. Look at us setting our vertex bytes at index one, at index one, all the same exact stuff. And if I click into my set vertex bytes and go to those actual vertex bytes, look, it's our, uh, what is this? Like positions or something. Yeah, it looks like, uh, look, or matrix. I don't know, something. What is this? Scene constants. So that's what scene constants look like. Uh, we need to make that better at some point, but that is going to be the data we're binding. And then we're gonna call super.render, which then calls into the node class. Super is the node class. And let's dive down into our super node class. And that's gonna render all the childs and childrens of my, me. And then if they're renderable, they're gonna draw them to the screen. So what can we do to group all this together? Well, it's very simple, actually. All we need to do is inside of our render call, inside of game engine, game sys, if I just show you over here, if we go through our collection and go to our node class right here, and I'll close this, go down to our render function and just go render command encoder dot push debug group. And then I'm gonna call that rendering node for now. We'll rename it in just a second. And then I'm gonna say render command encoder dot pop debug group. So what's gonna do is going to push this folder. It's gonna create a folder. And then everything that is within the push to pop will be inside that folder. And then you can have like subfolders and subfolders and subfolders, and then you pop them all the way out, okay? So when I say push degroup, debug group rendering node, it's gonna call render. It's gonna recursively call render. And then it's gonna call this again. It's gonna call rendering node, not very descriptive, but rendering node. And uh, for all of the different subgroups. So the scene should be the top level. And then the instance game object is going to be the next uh, one. So if I go down here, press this camera to capture the scene, we'll notice now that we have these folders. So we're rendering a node. This is going to be our scene. And then down here, we're rendering our instance game object. Now, we, what we can do to make that a little bit more verbose and a little easier to read is go back to our node class and create a variable called name. Okay, and I'm just gonna default that to node. And then I'm gonna create a func in it with a name. So we'll need, and then I'm gonna, and I'm gonna actually set that as the default to node. And then I'm gonna say self.name equals name. So we don't even need that. We just put an exclamation point for string. And down here, if this is not a funk in it, it's just in it. So there's gonna be a lot of places where this breaks because we haven't named it, which is good. So let's go back down here to override in it. It looks like in our scene, we need to call super.init with our name. So let's pass in a name. It's just gonna be scene. Uh, Cause this is just our default scene class. I'm gonna go command B to build again. Um, this doesn't override any initializers, so uh, this will be its own. Looks like it needs the name call, so may as well put that. God, I am breaking everything. There we go. This is just the scene class. <laughs> and looks good. But we can, what's cool is we can call super.init with our scene name and our object name. So if we go to the top, uh, obviously I haven't changed anything, so it's not gonna be different. Go back to our node class, 
go down here to where we're saying rendering node, do a backslash, and this is how you do string interpolation, and I'll just put name in there instead. So it'll look something like render command push debug group with the name. So I'm gonna be rendering the name of our node. <clears throat> uh, and it's breaking because it doesn't like me. But we'll see what happens. Let's go back to our debugger. And we'll notice now that it says rendering optional scene, rendering optional node, because I never actually changed the name of our instance game object. But you'll see it says optional scene. Uh, instead of doing it like this, let's just set it equal to node so it doesn't have that weird optional thing. I don't want to have to unwrap it. I mean, I could unwrap it, but it's whatever. It's, it doesn't bother us, right? Now it's it's happy. It's it's smiling. Um, let's go to our game instance game object uh, where we're calling super dot in it. And let's go uh, name, and we'll pass in instanced, instanced <laughs> game object right there. Um, in our cube collection, which is an instance game object, uh, we're calling super dot in it right there. Uh, why don't we just go self dot name? I mean, I could just go override the initializer, but self dot name equals, um, let's say, cube collection just like so and i'm actually going to remove this cube count thing because i forgot to do that in the past and everything builds just fine let's press play and see what happens so i hope i hope you kind of understand what's going on and why i'm doing the things i'm doing why you know i'm creating these groups if you don't we'll talk about it but now look look at this rendering scene rendering cube collection inside here we have all of our different things we're rendering uh I mean, there's one little problem right here where we're setting our vertex bytes above. So that, like, that's one thing we can optimize is that even when we're rendering a scene, let's not do this and then render the scene. Let's, you know, create a function inside the render function, and we'll do that. And I have a, and the next episode is going to be a cleanup episode, so I'm going to go through and clean up a bunch of code. I'm not going to do that right here, um, but you guys got to get the gifs. You can go through your debugger pretty easily and figure out what's wrong with stuff. And yeah. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to dive any further into the debugger and how it works, hit me up on Discord. I'll put that link in the channel and we can go through even more features. Like one of the features that I didn't cover is say we have our texture right here and we want to like look at some of the pixels on like, why is this pixel color different? Uh, you can go here and you see the pixel. Like there's a bunch of random little things um, that could be, you know, you can be utilizing when um you're in the debugger so let me know we can talk about it and yeah uh next episode will be a cleanup episode so it won't be 100 percent like you know learning new concepts but i think i'm i just want to prepare for new concepts you know we're about to do texture coordinates and we're going to need to make it so that these episodes aren't nine hours long of me fixing code you know we got a low code debt solve some of that code debt so let me know what you think hit me up like comment, do that shit. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.